<laughs> oh, hi, Arturo Pittore here, but you can call me Art. This is Explorations in Art History, starring me. <laughs> and the hand. What about the rest of me? How embarrassing. People watching from around the world. I'm stuck waiting on some five-fingered prima donna. Oh, oh, well, that's better, right? See? Uh, <clears throat> it looks like we'll be talking about the medieval and Byzantine periods. It had taken many lifetimes and countless battles to conquer and maintain the vast regions of the Roman Empire. When Emperor Theodosius I took power, he ruled over lands that stretched from Portugal to Palestine. The question of succession of power had always been a thorny problem in the empire, and for Theodosius, it came down to a choice between two sons. Or did it? In 395 AD, Theodosius instead split the empire in half. The western half became the domain of his son, Honorius. We call it the Western Roman Empire. The eastern half was awarded to his son, Arcadius, and became known as the Byzantine Empire. The two kingdoms both considered themselves Roman, though they spoke Latin in the west and Greek in the east. Honorius and the Western Roman Empire were besieged by barbarian hordes from the beginning. Huns, Goths, Vandals, and Franks all took turns invading Western territories. Sacking Rome became a barbarian pastime, and the Vandals, thanks to their exceptional knack for destruction and violence, gave us the word vandalism. Ow! I hate when that happened! It was a rough and tumble time. Only 81 years after the death of Theodosius, the Western Roman Empire ceased to exist. With the empire splintered into separate countries, the one unifying force to remain was the Catholic Church and the Pope. The Byzantine Empire, on the other hand, would last another thousand years. In 730 AD, Emperor Leo III initiated a movement called Iconoclasm. Based on a strict interpretation of the Ten Commandments, which forbade the making and worshipping of graven images and, perhaps due to the rising influence of Islamic culture, the iconoclasts sought the removal or destruction of paintings and sculptures. There's one. This way, man. Uh, look at it. Get it. Gutted that one. There's one. There's another one. Go and get it. Ah, we're too late. There's one. There's another one. Oh, stop him. Stop him now, hurry! Caught him in the act! Ah! Take the scoundrel away! After iconoclasm ended, Byzantine artists were limited to copying approved images from the past. I'm a copy of 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 a copy. Back in Rome, Pope Gregory II rejected iconoclasm and denounced it as heretical. He even sent a letter excommunicating the iconoclasts. It's Byzantine blasphemy. Excommunicate them! As a result, artists in the West had more creative freedom. The church was the major patron of the arts, and so most medieval art had religious themes. Western artists of the later Middle Ages were interested in creating visionary experiences. Over time, in the search to create more convincing and powerful images, their art became more realistic in its portrayal of people and the natural world. I have dimension! This is Art saying thanks for sharing another fascinating exploration into... Uh, hey, I'm, I'm not done talking! What? Hey, I'm not finished!